Ni howdy, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Gong Fu Tea Cha. Today we are diving even deeper into the world of white tea. You thought we were done, but we're not. We today are going to talk about my favorite kind of white tea, which is aged white tea. I mentioned in the fresh white tea episode that the way that I got into white tea in general was through aged white tea. And to recap the story, a very wonderful person named Yushi Hong, who comes from Fujian, uh, introduced me to aged white tea in a tea house in Chengdu of all places, a place where they don't generally drink white tea. Um, actually, I managed to th think that I disliked white tea almost all the way through my entire time living in China because I was living in Chengdu in Western China, very far from Fujian, the traditional home of white tea, as we discussed last time. Fuding, Fujian, the home of white tea. All the way over in Chengdu, people don't drink that much white tea. They drink green tea, mostly and they drink a little bit of yellow tea, and they drink jasmine tea, and they drink puar sometimes, but they don't drink much white tea, and the white tea that they do drink is not usually very especially good. But Mr. Yushi Hong uh, comes from Fujian, and he comes from white tea country, he comes from northern Fujian, and one day he invited me and uh, my roommate Lance, who I know him through, to a little tea house that he worked at downtown, a very fancy little tea house, and he's like, you guys wanna drink some white tea? And I was like, okay, sure, yeah, and he popped out a cake, and I had never seen white tea in a cake before. Boom. It was kind of like this, but really, it was a lot more like this, because he'd been chewing on it. Well, he'd been drinking it. That's what I say with a cake, is I've been chewing on it. But I've been chewing on it. It's been getting drunk. Um, but Yushi Hong produced a tiny little chunk of a, of a tea cake wrapped in paper, and I was like, oh, that's white tea? I've never seen a cake of white tea. And he's like, yeah, this is from 2005. And I was like, it's aged? I didn't know white tea could be aged. I'd never heard of such a thing. Mind you, this is me after drinking tea at this point for like 10 years I'd been drinking tea. And I had uh, uh, you know, worked at a tea house and I had traveled to tea farms all over southwestern China at least. But I had never come across aged white tea and no one had ever served it to me before. So Yushi Hong served me a little bit of 2005 by Mudan and I was like, this is amazing. Where did you get this? And he directed me to a woman named Li Yan Mei. So I'm gonna go ahead and Use this little guy. These two, I'm gonna open myself. But today, we're gonna start with this guy here. This is called Cumulus. It's a Shomei from 2012. If you remember from the last episode, we talked about the different grades of white tea, starting with Yinjun, Silver Needle, at the very top, all buds, and then Bai Mudan, picked a little later in the spring, a mixture of buds and leaves. And then at the bottom, Shomei, Longevity Eyebrow, mostly leaves, a little bit of buds. But you know what, it's one of my favorite ones. It might be my favorite kind of white tea at the end of the day, although I do love Bai Mudan a lot. Um, so last time we worked down the tree, we went started at Silver Needle and worked down to the leafier grades. Today we're gonna go up the tree. We're gonna start from Shomei, the leafiest grade, and then we're gonna go up all the way back to Silver Needle. So I'm gonna unwrap this beautiful little bang for you and let you see what she looks like. There we go. Isn't that cool? I love white tea beans. I love the way they smell. So let me talk a little bit about aged white tea. First of all, this is a traditional thing in fooding. In fact, they have a saying for it. One year tea, three years medicine, seven years treasure is what they say. And this describes the process of white tea aging and how the tea improves with age. And here, I'll do this up here so y'all can see. I'm just gonna perch this little guy on my knee. Don't try this at home. Seriously, you might stab yourself. Hopefully I don't stab myself here on camera. That would be really embarrassing. I guess we could just cut and do, do another one. <laughs> could go in the blooper reel. But let me get this. Oh yeah, just to coax a little flake of this beautiful tea out here. Mmm-hmm, mmm-hmm. I love this cake. I drink this cake almost every day because my fiance, Lindsay, loves white tea and this is her like grounding, settling down tea. So. Aged white tea, what's happening when white tea ages? We're familiar with aged puar, aged hei cha. Those are fermenting, and it's a little bit different with white tea. White tea is not actually fermenting per se. It's oxidizing. It's oxidizing very slowly. And the reason that it is oxidizing is because it has not had the polyphenol oxidase, which is a, an enzyme that oxidizes the chemicals in tea. It has not had that enzyme denatured. And so it slowly continues to oxidize 
over time, not as quickly as a fresh wet leaf because it's been dried out, but it does slowly oxidize. And as it oxidizes, it goes from being the very light in color, fresh kind of uh, springy tasting tea that we experienced in the last episode with our, you know, our silver needle that was almost as clear as water, all the way down to our wild purple white, which is basically its moonlight white, which had a little bit more of a gold to it, but really it never got dark per se. Aged white tea gets dark. That oxidation makes it dark in color and dark in flavor. And it actually ends up tasting sometimes a lot like red tea because like red tea, it is oxidized. And so white tea is incredibly dynamic. Uh, the way that it changes as it ages is incredibly dynamic. Just to caveat, it will ferment. Given enough time in the right climate, it will ferment, but generally it doesn't because it hasn't been subjected to processes that are intended to ferment it, and it's uh, not stored in a humid environment usually, which is the, the prime environment to ferment tea. So I'm gonna give this guy a little love. I got my water pretty hot. Got my water just about boiling. I go crazy on white teas, as in I'll steep them super hot and I'll steep them super long. And the reason for that is they can take it and they like it. That oxidation has turned those very pale, light-colored tea chemicals and those light floral fragrances into these dark, uh, dark color and kind of strong mouthfeel. And then you get a little bit more of a uh, sweeter fragrance like sweet like honey, or dates, raisins, that kind of profile. And so that saying, one year tea, three years medicine, seven years treasure, is describing the way that the flavor progresses as it ages, but also the way that the chi progresses as it ages. That's why they say three years medicine. Medicine doesn't necessarily taste good, although aged white tea of three years tastes good. It definitely never tastes like medicine. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm gonna stop talking for a second. I'm just gonna steep this tea. So there's our rinse right there. And now that these leaves are wet, I'll let you check that out. This is that pressed Chaumet. This is eight years old as of the time of this filming, so it's uh, extra treasury. I'm gonna use this hotter water here. I'm gonna give this one, I wanna give this a nice long steep. Aged white teas have the, especially ones pressed into cakes, have the most longevity of any type of tea that I can think of, even hay chai, even fermented puar. It has, you can get more steepings out of an aged white tea than any of those. Aged white teas go and go and go. And so the paradigm that we discussed in the last episode still holds true that the leafier grades are darker and more robust and the leafier grades age faster. The more leaf material there is in the cake, the faster, or in the batch of tea at least, the faster it ages. And so this kind, Shomei, the leafiest grade, ages really fast and it ages really deep. And you quickly achieve that woody profile that then and evolves into that honey-y, sometimes molasses-y, raisin, grape skin, date, fig character. Go, a little more color there, a little more color, and I'm gonna do a, do like a long one. This is like a whole bunch of, this is a whole bunch of chunky chunk, so it's gonna take a sec to wake up. In the same way that aged white teas are, um, have a great deal of longevity, they also take a minute to get going. And I would say that most aged white teas of any, of more than three years age, peak at like the seventh to 10th steepings, as opposed to like the fourth or fifth some of this one here. So the system that I used in the last episode, I like it a lot because it allows me to pour, you know, show y'all many steepings without wasting any tea. So I'm gonna continue that. Yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. Still open up. Mm. So I'm gonna continue the system, but I'm gonna use these mutton fat jade cups because he used those big die cups last time. Isn't that cool? These are so sweet, I love these. Just unpack these, they're so white. So here we go. I'm gonna be steeping. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in like at least three or four steepings of this cumulus. I'm not gonna waste this wonderful cumulus. So I met Yushi Hong, he introduced me to H White Tea. He also introduced me to Lee and Mei, the tea farmer slash tea master slash tea merchant, who is the source of all of these white teas. And 
not all of these she grew. This one she grew and this one she grew. She did not grow this cumulus. She collected it from one of her neighbors. Oh, see, here we go. Yeah, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Now we got some, some decakeification. The cake is becoming liberated from its cake form and is becoming loose leaves. Hmm. Oh, I almost got like a oregano thing. I never noticed that before. Hmm. And I'm getting some more of that like wet wood character developing. And you can see that I've got mucho mas color in this tea. You're starting to get those really beautiful amber notes to it. And it looks pretty in the cup too. I don't know if you can see the cup, but it looks really pretty. Boom. Get another one of these. And so really I just wanna show you how different this tea is from what we were drinking last time, even from the analogous grade of, of tea, which was the, the uh, wild purple white, which would be kind of like a show may grade. It was fresh and this is aged. And because it is aged, it's a completely different animal. I cannot emphasize enough how different fresh white teas are from aged white teas. You get this deep color, you get a deep rich flavor, you approach Hong Cha and also the chi is very different. How is it different? It becomes very maternal, almost comforting. White tea, okay, I'm gonna get a little philosophical here. So, and there may be a, a, so I think of white tea as the most yin tea or the most like feminine tea, if you wanna put it that way. And, and so the, the fresh white tea, especially something like Buddy, like Silver Needle, the freshest of the fresh, like the new growth and freshly picked and freshly processed into white tea is like, a, like a, a little girl. It's like very playful and light and innocent and just full of energy and creativity and running around. And then as white teas age, they become like sweet and complex and beautiful and stronger. And as they, and the old, aged white teas have this like sweet, powerful wisdom, like their depth and their wisdom kind of grows, but they also become longer lasting. You can get more steepings out of them and they get more nuanced and the, the complexity of the flavor profile increases hugely. And they develop this almost like maternal kind of energy to them. They're no longer the young girl. They're now this like, this like wise, mature mother. And the older they get, like the wiser and more mature that they become but they always have this very gentle, nourishing, nurturing kind of energy to them. So getting a little freaky, it's late. You know, this is our second one in a row that we filmed these. Drinking a lot of white tea tonight, so I'm feeling that white tea spirit. And I will say this, Lee and May, the woman who introduced me to aged white tea, I mean, Yushi Hong introduced me to her, but she's the one who opened up my world to aged white tea. Um, and she, is very beautiful and all of her employees also happen to be beautiful women and her tea shop was extremely beautiful and white and she had this big stainless steel chop on and it just had this like tea can be very doodly in china you know there's a lot of the tea spaces are really dominated by men but this was a very starkly different and very feminine and very yin space and it was clean and well lit and neat and elegant. And she had this, she had this porcelain gaiwan and just a pure white porcelain gaiwan. And you know, when you, when you are, are drinking tea, you smell the lid. A lot of the time when you're just steeping tea with a gaiwan, you can smell the lid and you get that evaporating fragrance, the cup fragrance or the lid fragrance, the, or the, the langxiang, the cold fragrance, which is the second fragrance that you get from tea. And with, depending on the tea, it can be very, very sweet. Wu Yi Oolong's red teas, they tend to have a very strong, very sweet and dynamic cold fragrance that changes. Look how red that's getting. Look at that, look at that. Keep looking. There we go. I'm gonna do one more. I'm kind of rhapsodying here, but I'm, I'm gonna go with it. But she had this 
like clean, shiny, stainless steel chapon that was just big, and she obviously cleaned it, you know, all the time to keep it nice and shiny. And she had this very sparse, minimal tea wear, and she had this gaiwan that was uh, pure white porcelain, but then when you looked underneath the lid, there was a, a hand-painted image of uh, one of the four Chinese beauties. I think it was Shishi, or maybe it was uh, Yang Guifei, or, or it was one of these four Chinese beauties. And it's this like kind of like demure, but also kind of like powerful looking uh, feminine figure, like cloaked in a robe and it was so cool because you'd pick up the lid instinctually as a tea server, you're, you're doing it and you pick up the lid and you, you turn it over to smell and there's this beautiful woman, this image of this beautiful woman, this sweet fragrance emerging from her. It was really cool. Um, and, and, the, and maybe because of the way I was introduced, maybe because of that experience, but white tea has always had this really like powerful, complex, feminine energy for me. And you know, the thing about white tea is, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one. I don't got nowhere to put these leaves. Hey, <laughs> Sweet, I got a shui fang. I can put my leaves somewhere. We don't usually do it this way. Usually we've got three vessels and the leaves are sitting there, but you know, mixing it up, keeping it fresh, fresh like the last episode's white tea, but sweet like this episode's white tea. Get this last little juicy bit out of here. That, that little uh, technical difficulty gave me time to steep one more round of this guy. And so, H white tea, because it is so sweet and because it is so mellow, you don't really have to get the gaiwan all the way empty or the teapot all the way empty. I'm doing this last little steeping. I wanna squeeze out every last little drop. But you can leave a little bit of water in there. Like hey Chaz, it will enrich the next steeping. There we go. Get fish rinsed out and I'm gonna put this guy here. I'm gonna get this guy out of here. That's for later. And then this beautiful tea can sit right there. Ah, okay. And I'm gonna rinse out my gaiwan. See, really I just didn't want to, I wanted to use this little gaiwan because then I can do a bunch of steepings of one tea and just fill one cup and get through the whole progression because you really need to see the progression several steepings in with aged white tea because it is so complex and so dynamic. And I know you can't taste it or smell it, but it's changing a lot. Okay, now we have to open some beings for real style. Uh, this is the first time I've had either of these two, so I'm very excited. This is Baimudan White Peony, the second grade of white tea. We climbed the tree up from the lowest grade Shomei to the mid grade by Mudan. And by Mudan was my first white tea love um, because that's the one that Yu Shi Hong served me the first time. And then the first white tea that Lee and May served me that I really liked was also a by Mudan. By Mudan doesn't age as fast as Shomei, but it is really fragrant when it does. Like you get a much nicer tea in the end. And y'all, check this out. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is just a sexy being a tea. This is a really nice Baimudan too. Cause you see all the little buds, you see how many little buds there are? Dang, that's pretty. I almost don't wanna break it, but I'm gonna do it for you, our viewers. I would, I would I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it with my tea knife, hold on. There's something very energetically powerful about cracking open a fresh bing of tea. Let me see if I can prop this up on my knee again and let y'all see. Also, I hadn't tried this tea yet and we gotta add it to the website. Gotta write a description for it. Alrighty. This one, if I cut myself, we couldn't fake it with another take because the bing is intact. So I better not cut myself. Or if I do, I better just pretend I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my. Yes, come to Papa. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. Oh wow. This is really nice. I'm very excited about this. I got a whole bunch of these. I got a whole tong of these ones. I got seven of these beautiful beings. 
Back you go, my lovely. I'll attempt to rewrap this thing later. I'm not very good at that, but I will try to. <laughs> Boom. Now, for the fun part. I'm drinking it. Bimadon White Peony. More buds, ages slower. But the result, I think, is ultimately more complex. You get more complexity from an aged Bimadon than you do from an aged Shomei, although the aged Shomei will achieve that aged character faster. And the inclusion of more buds means that there's just more fragrance, there's more fragrance notes in it. But you're gonna see, this is a 2016 uh, by Madon, and so it's not nearly as old as my Shomei. So it's gonna be lighter in color for that reason. Also, because it is a buddier grade, it's gonna be light in color. Got a, got a buddy comedy going on here. Get rid of this cup. Shomei cup, I don't need that. I need my by Madon cup. Give it a rinse. Oh, and now, let's see the color. Very light, very, very light. Just getting going. I give this a little more. There we go. Slightly hotter kettle. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, okay. This is my first time trying this one. This one has very distinct notes. Honestly, it's been a minute since I had a nice aged Bimodon. We haven't had one of these for a, a little while. And so I'm really excited to have these ones. If I was gonna characterize it as different, I would say rather than being like all honey and dates, I would say it's almost like, like a really, it's almost like, it's almost like kind of like a grapes with ricotta cheese kind of vibe or like, what's in a cannoli? Um, technically, what's in a canolo? The singular of canoli is canolo. So whatever's in a canola, mascarpone. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of got like a, like a, like a, yeah, like some kind of fruity mascarpone vibe to it. I'm excited about this. Wow, much clearer. This is so buddy. This is getting close to being like, I mean like Mudan Wong, which means Peony King level buddy. So oh, while well, we're talking about all this fancy white tea stuff, might as well talk about the subgrades of white tea and fuding, uh, which are uh, generally in the aged grade categories. Um, White peony, when you get the really buddy white peony, the really early spring white peony that's mostly buds, they call that Mudan Wang, which means peony king, and that's the highest grade of white peony. Any higher and it would be just silver needle, it'd be pure buds. Mmm, whoa, okay. It's super creamy and super, mm. I've never gotten such a creamy, almost like, a little bit of like butterscotchy kind of note to this one. A lot of this show is me going. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, hold on. I forget what it was. The other day we were doing tasting notes for a tea, and the tasting note was like caramel corn or like like candy corn if candy corn was good. And I'm kind of getting a little bit of that from this, where you have this kind of creamy, sweet quality, like a buttery quality, which I've never tasted this much of like a, like a creamy dairy note in a white tea before. So that's really cool. Maybe I'm gonna give it a funny name with something to do with cheese or something. So we'll see. We shall see. Man, Lee and May's always surprised me. And so she ages these teas. So some of these teas she grows. This one she grew. That one she grew. This one she got from someone that she knows and trusts because she grew up in fooding. She knows a lot of farmers there. And then she buys them when they're fresh and then she hangs on to them. She stores them in her cedar lined storehouse. It smells great. It's lined with cedar. It's got stacks and stacks and stacks of cakes of tea in there. It smells incredible. And um, 
So she stores them there and she ages them in a climate and humidity controlled cedar room. She's very good at aging tea. She has just exquisite taste in everything. Um, and, and then she resells them because a lot of these tea farmers, white tea is not generally, well, in my experience, I've only gotten aged white tea cakes from her and, and maybe like one or two other people. Uh, or actually, I've really only gotten aged white tea cakes from her. I do get fresh, feral white tea, like feralized, as in like these are fields that people used to grow tea in and it was sort of generations ago and now there's some kind of feral tea plants living there. Um, uh, the Zhang family in Fujian and Fuding uh, also uh, produces white tea and they produce really good shomei and gongmei, which I'll talk about in a minute, and, and baimudan, but they... Oh, Get a little more color there, a little more goldenness, or gold, you could say. But they don't have aged ones because they don't hang on to them. White tea, a run of white tea cakes, you're gonna get, mm, mm, mm. hold on, I'll get to it in a second. In, in a run of white tea cakes, you're gonna get way fewer cakes than you would with a run of puar or in, in my experience, generally. Maybe there's big mass-produced white tea cakes that are getting cranked out, I'm sure there are. But generally speaking, my experience with white tea has been through Lee and May and people she's introduced me to and she knows a little bitty farmers. And so, whereas you might get like hundreds and hundreds of cakes that are, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cakes in the same batch, same year, same farm from a Puar farmer, you get way, way fewer of white tea. And so they run out really fast. We've gone through maybe like two dozen, probably, or at least more than 20 white tea vintages and cakes of various grades and various years um, in the time that this company has existed. When we first started out, we were selling 2005s and 2006s, 2007s. I mean, we've literally had, yeah, we had a 2005, we had a 2006, we had a 2008, all by Mudans and Shome, and, and then 2008, we had a Shomei also of that. We had a 2010 Gongmei. We've got, uh, we've had a bunch of 2000, this is from 2012, we had a 2011, we had a 2014, a 2016. So we've gone through all these different years and what's happening is that we're getting the oldest cake that we can get that's not so expensive. That's not just like stupid expensive. We're getting the oldest cake that we can get and we get as many as we can get that we can afford, but eventually they just run out and then they're gone. And I do hang on to some, I try to hang on to some, but man, it's just like, that's like taking up space, you know what I'm saying? And then I've got like one Bing and, I'm, and I've got to make a product page for this one Bing <laughs> that's gonna be gone one day and, and it's just gone. So I might just have those at the tea house. But anyways, the, that's the deal. Tea, white tea cakes are very limited in, in runs. So farmers don't usually hang on to their, their white tea cakes. They usually just sell the, out that year because their production is so much smaller than say like a, a poor uh, production. And, um, and so it's hard to get aged white tea cakes from the farm that grows it, or it's been hard for me, but Lee and May has made a career out of collecting these cakes, buying them when they're young and fresh and storing them and letting them uh, appreciate and then reselling them later. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I really, there's like on the tip of my tongue, there's a note for this tea. It's like green grapes, Green grapes, still getting that kind of like caramely butterscotchy thing, but not like you think. Candy corn-ish, maybe like taffy. Definitely something kind of dairy-y, something sweet, and kind of like white and creamy, and with a little bit of color to it. You know, like a little bit, like a creme brulee, ooh. I think I just nailed it. It's kind of like a creme brulee because it's got that creamy, sweet, dense whiteness to it. And then there's that just a little hint of like a caramely twist. I'm really into this tea. I'm gonna try and figure out what I can do with these leaves. So I'm not just throwing, ah, it's whatever. The cake's open now. I'll make another one. And like the silver needle, and we saw the silver needle in the last episode, you get downy little white hairs, you get way fewer in this, but they're still there. They're still there. 
but it's not just a cloud of little white hairs the way that Silver Needle is. All right. Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna need to heat the water again. And now I've got hot water. Because I haven't made this tea before, I don't want to just not try doing it with hotter water. I'm really curious to see what happens when I hit it with some like full heat water. And I'm gonna show you these leaves in a sec because they're really, really pretty. Aged white tea. Very interesting thing about aged white tea is that there's not a ton of what you would call technique to pouring it. You know, like in the, the Phoenix episode, we talked about the specific techniques that we use for pouring Phoenix Oolong, and it can be a very technical type of tea. But aged white tea, for me, I find I get the best results from it when I am just being very attentive, and I'm just really monitoring the character of the tea as it progresses. I'm just gonna let you see these leaves here as they open up. This is very nice. It's very fine by Mudan with lots of nice whole leaves and lots of little buds in there. And you can see the way that it's changed color where it was before it was this variegated color where you had the silver buds and the kind of bright green leaves. Now they've all kind of turned into this sage color. It's really pretty. I've been really enjoying this. It's been nice in a glass vessel probably too. Hit it with hot water, let it cool down in the glass a little bit. And so I want to show you a thing that these teas do, these aged white teas do. This is maybe like the sixth steeping, um, or fifth or sixth steeping. And what happens with aged white teas is that around the sixth, fifth, sixth, between the fifth and the eighth steepings, the teas start to kind of feel like they're petering out, like they're, they're getting to the end. And there's a trick when this is the only technique that I can really call a technique of any kind with aged white teas, is that mm, mm, mm. when that happens, man, grab it away. Um, when that happens, if you hit them with full hot water and you let them steep just way, way, way longer than any other steeping, than all the preceding steepings, they totally flip over. I mean, like they just start again and you get a completely different tea. And that's when you get a lot of those honey notes and those really rich, sweet notes come out is after the tea has, has hit its nadir and then it, it, it comes back up. And, but you gotta be patient. You gotta be very attentive and you gotta be very patient. And you have to be very sensitive to what the tea is telling you by the way that it tastes, and smells, and feels. White tea, in general is fairly forgiving. Fresh white teas, so I'll, we'll put it this way, green tea or shang puar, for example, if you do them too long, you do them too hot, then they're, they're, they'll, they'll, they'll let you know. They get really bitter and astringent. Fresh white teas, they're like, if you do them too hot or too long, they're just like, hmm. They're just like, just kind of like get shy. And like, the, like, for example, silver needle. People are like, oh, this silver needle, I want it to taste stronger, so I'm gonna put hotter water on it. If you do it too soon, you can do that near the end. But if you do it too soon before the tea has had a chance to warm up and open up a little bit, you actually end up scaring away the flavor. And paradoxically, you get less flavor when you put too much temperature than when you do just the right temperature. Too little heat, not enough flavor. Too much heat also, not enough fragrance is what it really does, is it really pushes away the fragrance. And so with fresh white teas, they're, they're, not, they're not gonna punish you for, for steeping them wrong, but they're, they're particular. They need to be steeped in a certain way or, and they, and they, or they'll, they'll be kind of elusive, I guess, or coy, maybe, is a good way to put it. But aged white teas are never, um, they're very forgiving, they're very kind, they're very compassionate. They'll be good no matter what, but if you can follow their vibe, if you can kind of move with them and, and pay careful attention as you're steeping them, I'm starting to get some more color here. This is what I'm talking about. This is that, that extra bonus round that you get from these aged white teas when you've steeped them to the extent 
uh, what it seems like the extent, but then you have patience and sensitivity with them, and then you can really wake them up and get a whole bunch of other steepings out of them. Mm. Grapey, grape skin, kind of like a grape pie. Is that a thing? It sounds kind of good. It sounds like it'd be too moist. But I mean, this is actually liquid, so, you know. But yeah, kind of like, got some grapiness, got some pieiness, maybe like a grape, maybe like a grape pie that was like a custard pie that had grapes in it. That actually sounds kind of good. So I'm gonna wrap this one up, although I'm very excited to revisit it later. And then I'm gonna do something that, I'm gonna try a tea that I, another tea that I haven't tried before. And this one is, I mentioned in the last episode, just gave you one last look at these leaves. I mentioned in the, in the last white tea episode that I hadn't really had much aged silver needle. But this last time, as I was restocking on silver needle, I just got a wild hair and I was like, do you have any aged silver needle bings? And they're like, yeah, in fact, we do. We got some 2018 silver needle bings. And they are also by Lee and May. She grew them, but they are a different grade, i.e. from a lower altitude than the loose silver needle that I had in the last episode. Silver needle is not always pressed into bings because they end up being really, really expensive because it's just a really expensive tea and uh, when it's good. Um, and also, like I said, uh, aged silver needle is not nearly as much of a thing um, as aged Chaumet or Bimudan. And so I'm excited to try this beauty right here. Oh, I didn't save enough tea for this one. That's okay. That's okay. Here, I'll put a little bit, put a little bit back from this here vessel so you can see it. There we go. There we go. Because you want to see the tea, you know. But I'm about to crack this silver needle bang, so this is an event. I have not had this bang. I have not really had much aged silver needle. So, oh boy, you hope you're ready for this. Ooh. so pretty. I want to see the front. Oh man. Here, I'll show you the back. Eh. Yeah. It's so fuzzy. It's very tactile. All right, my little friend, let us operate. Being, balancing bings on your knee is like a like high high level T skill. This is there we go. It's very dense. It's much denser than the other one. It's much harder to get into. A lot of wiggling. Wiggling is your friend. I actually don't think I've ever cracked a bing of silver needle before. It's very different. I don't need all this. There we go. Wow, cool. Beautiful. It's so very ethereal. It's like, it gives me vibes just holding it. And I've got like, what is this? Is this like a big, it's like a big stem. There's like one little stem in this like pure white thing. That's really cool. Put it there. Wow, cool. This is a really kind of surreal experience for me because I've never done this before. And I thought I had done most of the tea things, but you know, you never know. Surprise you all the time. Tea. It's a wide and magical world, and I'm always discovering new things. So, although I've known about silver needle bangs for a while, I've never actually gotten one before. So, I'm very excited to try this. Hmm. All right. Let's see what we got. I'm just gonna hit it with full heat water. So, I guess another little piece of technique for white tea is that 
when you are rinsing your white tea, the name of the game with a cake of aged white tea is that you want to get the leaves wet. And of course, duh, you're making tea, you want to get the leaves wet. However, what I mean is that you really want to focus on pouring slowly and giving, get, making sure that you saturate the leaves as much as possible. Wow, very clear. Hmm. Hmm. Sweet hay notes. Hmm. Yeah, like sweet, dry, warm grass. Sweet, dry grass in the sun. Definitely like a very like warm, toasty note. This is actually a very eye-opening episode for me because I hadn't had either of these teas before and I'm learning new things about how complex aged white teas, especially the buddier grades of aged white teas can be. White peony I've had plenty of, but seeing the this third grade, this highest grade of, of white tea in its aged pressed form is kind of teaching me something about the progression up the grades, you know, not the progression with time as a given tea ages, but the progression as you go up from the leafiest grades to the buddiest grades. And you can see, you know, very clearly the, the, the progression here. I'm gonna actually go like that because this one is gonna go here. And then you can see that progression of the grades. And again, these aren't the same age. If this was a perfect world, then we'd all be doing the same vintage of tea. Um, but you know, we got what we got and it's tasty. Very light, very soft, almost a little bit of cinnamon. What was a green apple in the loose silver needle is more like a plum without the skin. Hmm. The chi is very, very different. It's uh, actually like totally different than the shomei. It woke me right up and it's all up here. It's all up in my head and it's this like clear, invisible, back and forth resonating kind of feeling energy. It's very like high vibration. Honestly, the, the, I felt where I felt it in my body and the way the energy felt started really low and deep in this like grounding, that kind of like embracing maternal warm chi that I was talking about. And it's actually been rising up my body. And uh, mm, mm, very soft and clear and kind of like walking through a very sweet cloud. Like just like walking through a cloud and breathing it in and it's just very sweet. Wow, okay, I'm excited to go deeper with this one and see what it does. Y'all are exploring with me at this point. <laughs> this is, uh, we're all going into uncharted territory. The leaf mass has not really broken up yet. It's starting to. We still got a little raft of leaves here. They're starting to change color. Same farm, same farmer, still early spring lower altitude, therefore a little less fancy. They usually save the, the best silver needle to keep, have loose, have it be loose. Um, my understanding when I was talking about this, because I, I got the, both the loose and the pressed silver needle, and I was like, how come the, the loose one is cheaper than the, or the loose one's more expensive than the pressed one by mass? And they're like, well, it's a different grade. And I said, do you have any cakes of the highest grade? And they're like, we don't put the highest grade into cakes, we let it stay loose. Mm. Getting a little bit of a hint of that that candy corn caramely sort of thing at the end there, but there's that higher cinnamony, very crisp plum note on top of it. None of the woodiness, none of the dried fruit. We're definitely more in like fresh fruit than dried fruit territory. How has this tea changed with age and with pressing? I would say, well, and it's a different grade, but 
I would say what I can tell most is this, this cinnamon thing, um, especially on the, the, the dry cup, the empty cup, the, the Lung Xiang, that cold fragrance. Well, let's see what this is like. Still very sweet, still plummy. A little bit of, almost like a, like a dried, like a dry kind of piney note, some kind of tree. Hmm. Some kind of sweet wood note that I'm getting from this. Let's do a couple more of these for science. Do a longer steep, see what happens. This tea's ending up being very elusive tasting note wise. Let this go for a little longer and see what happens. So I'm actually in completely new territory now. Most of the stuff that I was saying about technique and aged white tea mostly applies to aged by Mudan and aged Chaumet. Silver Needle, I'm gonna have to spend some time really discovering what to do with an aged Silver Needle, but it's really good, I'm enjoying it. I feel like there's a lot to be explored. I feel like there's a lot of things that this tea can do or wants to do that I'm just gonna have to sit down and spend the time figuring it out. Now I'm getting a little bit of, getting a little bit of, man, I don't know, it's hard to describe. I wanna say some other kind of green fruit, maybe like the inside of a kiwi, but not as tart. Very mysterious. So I'm gonna play with this one a little more and see what all happens with it. But I would say that in, I'm gonna do a couple steepings of this so we can compare the color. Aged white tea, one of my favorite kinds of teas. Definitely I consider to be one of the most yin, one of the most feminine kinds of tea and very complex, very dynamic, very mysterious to me still apparently. <laughs> there are levels of, of this uh, tea that I have yet to plumb. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you all a last shot of these beautiful leaves. And I realize we can keep drinking this after we cut. So you, you, uh, you all can explore it with me. And then we'll do the side by side with these three beautifully colored teas. good there. Yeah, here, I'll do a, do a St. Pauli girl on this one. Pretty cool, aged white tea. How dynamic is white tea? How complex? Explore and see. Three different grades, different years. I would say that with the exception of Sheng Puar, no other tea changes so much as it ages as white tea. And, and uh, I guess something I wanna to touch on, do they age those Western white teas that we were doing in the last episode? Mm, I haven't seen it so much. We almost, we were trying to do one and I was like, do I have any aged Western white teas? And I do not. And I actually have had some aged, uh, I'm gonna use my last cup here too, my silver needle cup. I have actually had some aged uh, um, Moonlight White before and I did not feel like the age did anything for the tea and there's a distinct possibility that it could I am also excited to see what something like inner sun does as it ages and when I asked Hung Yi about it because I was like Hung Yi age white tea how's this one age she's like I don't know it hasn't aged yet it's brand new tea and it hasn't had time to age so there's much left to be explored for me personally and then for the world of tea in general about white tea 
this most naturalistic form of tea, and I was thinking about this in between filming episodes. White tea is the only type of tea that can be produced without human intervention. White tea is the only white tea that can be produced in its entirety by nature. It can be dried and it can be aged all on its own by nature. So, I don't know, maybe there's something there. There's a lot to be explored. Thank you guys so much for joining at our, I guess this is the, what? This is the last like tea type episode, right? No? Okay, yeah, not the last tea type episode. We got a couple more for you. We're not done yet, but we have reached definitely a great articulation point with aged white teas because this is probably the last type of, of tea that I got into was white tea um, and started to really enjoy. It. And this is how I got into it was this wonderful world of sweet, wonderful aged white teas. So thank you so much for joining and we will see you next time on Gong Fu Tea Chop.